This is for those of you who think that dark matter is made up of something called dark energy. Well, ha! You're such a fool. But I guess it's not your fault that you didn't learn anything in school. It's too bad you never took astrophysics in the spring. Learning about the cosmological constant while showing off your bling. More on that later because it's time to dive in. It's time to learn about astronomy and its wonders with a spin. Let's start with what matters most, which is dark matter, you see. Well, actually, you can't see it, which is why its name is so nifty. Now, you may ask, how do we know dark matter exists when our telescopes cannot directly spot it? To answer this, let's take a step back and try to make the pieces of the puzzle fit. We know of a thing called gravity and the role that it plays. Objects of mass become attracted to each other by it. They're attracted in different ways. It's what keeps our Earth orbiting around the sun night and day. But it's not the attraction that you feel when your lover tells you hey. Essentially, everything in the universe exerts a gravitational force on everything else. Whether it's two pebbles laying in the beach or two galaxies beyond reach. In one specific case, stars in a galaxy move with a certain velocity. This motion is due to the gravitational attractions of all other things in the galaxy. We can see all the matter in the galaxy and measure its mass. We can add up the stars, dust, rocks, and even the gas. When our calculations are done, a wave of shock hits us in the sternum. Because the stars are moving faster than they should for the amount of matter acting on them. But what does this mean? What do we do? Are our calculations incorrect? Are our theories reduced to poo? Everything seems to add up except the mass out there. There should be more mass. Then where is it? Where? Later, the idea of missing mass is formed by Fritz Zwicky. He says that we must accept that there is mass we cannot see. Let us not be too picky. Perturbations in this dark matter are responsible for forming the galactic structures of the universe. There's five times more dark matter than light matter. Yeah, we diverse. Another thing that was noticed is gravitational lensing. When light gets bent around a massive object, our astronomers start sensing this extra light coming to us from a star. Because the star all of a sudden becomes brighter, which we find kind of bizarre. The only thing to the explain this mass between the only thing to explain this is mass between the star and us. Mass we cannot see. Now that we know this mass exists, what can it possibly be? It's either a wimp or a macho, obviously. Is it a massive compact halo object? I don't know. It sounds shady. Because rocks, dim stars, cold white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes don't give us enough mass. Yet the probability of dark matter being weakly interacting massive particles is still there. We just may not have discovered the type of particle accounting for all the mass that is spare. To give us a more nuanced view of this stuff, let's break it down even further. There is hot dark matter and cold dark matter. This isn't to say that one feels like a cold rainy day while the other feels like a beautiful afternoon in the month of May. The difference between these two is actually the speed that they display. Let me quote what I read from Carolyn Osley yesterday. Hot dark matter consists of particles moving with relativistic velocities. The leading candidates for hot dark matter are massive leptons. Cold dark matter candidates are hypothetical particles that move slowly such as the wimps. Now you heard it. Now you see how I've brought soul into the boring book of Carol and Ossalie. You're probably tired of dark matter now. I can tell by your face. So I'll start talking about dark energy, which occupies even more space. This dark energy stuff is even more mysterious to us. It's what keeps up Hilary Duff because she wants to learn more about the universe in a sense that is rough. She wants to be vague, but that isn't enough because to learn it all, she needs to know what dark energy is, which is tough. Coming back from that tangent, my tangential velocity increases. Just like the derivative of the velocity of our expanding universe, it is positive because it increases. We can thank dark energy for this accelerated expansion of the universe 
and everything we know. But when it comes to knowing what dark energy is, is the, is the only expression we can show. Yet, there are a few things to say, which I'll mention. Dark energy is such a shaky concept, so I'll just give an introduction. Let me share with you the problem and we'll think of a solution. It's bigger than politics and wars, even bigger than pollution. A young cat named Alexander Friedman was attempting to solve Einstein's field equations for an isotropic homogeneous universe. He came up with the Friedman equation for a non-static universe. If we add a cosmological constant to this equation, things get a little crazy. Because if the value of the constant isn't zero, it means that empty space isn't really empty. Oh, baby! Empty space actually contains a dark energy, which causes it to expand. The more it expands, the more dark energy is created, and it continues to increasingly expand. The fact that this process of nothing actually creates energy has left astronomers devastated. Empty space contains matter and antimatter virtual particles which are created and annihilated. Some people from NASA say that this dark energy is just some energy fluid or field that fills all of space. However, this idea has no backing and hasn't established its place. Maybe to describe energy we need a new theory of gravity. Good luck with that, mates. All I can say is that 73% of our universe is dominated by this dark energy. 23% is made up the, is made up of that dark matter around each galaxy. The remaining 4% is everything that we can see. How does that make you feel? Does it make you want to cry? Does it make you feel insignificant, washed up, and ready to die? Knowing that everything you see in the sky is only a fraction of the guy, the guy you are listening to. Yes, that is me. I am the universe. I am baryonic matter, dark matter, and dark energy. So the next time you see me, please feel free to ask me how it started, how the universe came to be.